just realized I do have to give this in English. <laughs> no, just joking. Um, but I think I'm the first one not having English as native language, so you have to excuse me if I do say something wrong or you don't understand. <laughs> okay, I am uh, Matti Jelm. I'm Matti Jelm. Uh, I work for SmartBear and uh, we, we create tools for enhancing the quality of software. And in the Stockholm office, which is, which is just across the bridge in Hunstull, uh, we work with two products. Uh, it's one called uh, LoadUI for performance testing of APIs, and uh, SOAPUI, which I am the product owner of, which is for testing, functional testing of um, APIs. <laughs> And I'm going to talk about a little bit of what, uh, about APIs, what they are and why they are here. And uh, also about testers, because testing is my focus. And uh, why, why should you test APIs? Just make sure that everyone understands that. And what, what should you test and how should you test it? And first I start with a little quiz. Um, these two places on the world has uh, one thing in common. Does anyone know what it is? Nobody knows their names. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are people that know these names. <laughs> I can say it's Turkmenistan and it's uh, an area called West Sahara. So what do they have in common? <laughs> uh, Eric. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's, they are the only two, two areas or two places where um, um, the, the open source version of SOAP UI has not been downloaded ever. <laughs> so we have two countries left. Uh, it means we have a lot of, of users actually. We have um, a, a, around the one million users of SOAP UI open source. Uh, okay, about APIs. Um, Last, last week there was a new uh, iPhone coming out and I've always liked to watch these Apple keynotes because they're so good at um, showing the new products and especially I was impressed the one, the, the one time that Steve Jobs showed the, the iPad and I was really jealous about the guy that can have these kind of cool gadgets. But now as I become more mature I realize that uh, the gadgets themselves, they are not so important. It's actually, the, they would be like this, without the APIs. So we are creating the APIs for these gadgets, and that's much more important than the gadgets. The APIs have been, they have existed bef long before the smart tablets and smartphones, and they will probably exist long after. Uh, okay, uh, another question. I would like to know a little bit about my audience because all of my users are, are testers or are customers. So how many here in here are working 100% only with testing? Okay, one. <laughs> and sometimes there are developers working both as a developer and a tester. So are there any developers working with testing here? Ah, that's a lot. Um, okay, but most of you are, are not working with tests anyway. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about our testers, what, what they are. And uh, I, I regard, I think of them as, as salt. Have, have you ever tried making porridge and um, forget the salt? <laughs> Oatmeal porridge, for instance, doesn't taste very good. And so testing or testers, it, it's, um, they do things that are necessary, but sometimes you're, they are not so prioritized. For instance, these things that you have to make sure there is food on the table, you have to take care of the kids, and the house has to be cleaned before the husband comes home. And these things are not always uh, regarded as highly prioritized, but they have to be done. And sometimes the testers feel like this, they're, they're not really appreciated. <laughs> So it's important for me to create good tools for our testers. And so why test your API? Uh, it's about uh, the APIs are for interaction and information sharing. And um, one, one big reason is because you're exposing your core. 
as uh, Andy talked about earlier also, and I think you already know, it's, it's really, you're exposing sensitive data. So you have to be sure, you have, want to be in 100% control of this and be sure who can access it. So that's one reason why you should test it. And you also do some kind of promises. You, you want, uh, if you want um, customers, they want, they expect some kind of service level agreement with you, where you define quality of service, how of how how many hours will will your serve will your API work 24 hours a day, and what kind of quality in the data you're giving to the customer? How how is it working? So and uh, also uh, security, you have to promise that it works. And these are things you need to test before you can actually promise them. And the, the chains of services, also that Andy was talking about in the new economy. Of course, if you want to be one of the API suppliers in this economy, you have to make sure that your part of the chain is really working. Otherwise, you will not be part of the game. It's like when the cat wants to... This is just a picture showing a simple <laughs> way of the interaction or the relations between API vendors. And the cat goes to a pet site, which is created by some company that is good at, at creating websites. And the pet store is specializing in finding good food for cats. And they have an API that uh, the, the website uh, uh, creator can use. And then they understand that they are not so good at invoicing, which the one Klarna in, on the end is good at. And DHL is, is, is a, a company for distributing. So each of these might have an API. And if you are the one developing this API, you should make sure that it, to be part of this chain, you have to be able to promise certain quality of service. And the only way to be able to promise that is to test for it. So what do you need to test? Of course, you do have, have to do functional testing. Uh, but, and um, sometimes you can call that ad hoc testing, or actually, when people are doing functional testing, they do ad hoc testing. But it, that's not enough. It's, it's uh, just checking that you have a service. You have to do more than ad hoc or functional testing. You have to, to uh, uh, test for response time, for instance, uh, how fast the service is uh, answering. And um, that's something you have promised probably in your SLA. You have to test for uptime. Uh, and uh, you have to test for security that only the ones allowed to come into your API or use it are, are coming in. And also, um, you have to test for, for attacks, so users outside trying to, to destroy your API. That's something you need to test. You can't just design that it's secure. You have to test it also. And also, in every API has a lot of operations. And you have to be able to show that you have covered tests of all these operations. So you have to do some coverage tests also. And um, as REST is becoming more popular, it's worth to mention that in the SOAP uh, interface is, uh, when you create a SOAP interface, you have to have the compulsory WSDL document, which de defines all the operations in, um, in the API. But when you're working, working with REST, there is no similar standard that everyone is working using. So you can't, you have to do uh, the coverage testing in a more, um, context-driven uh, approach, because you must be sure that you have covered everything, but there is no easy way to find everything that you have to test. Okay, the interesting part, finally, how to test. And one strong recommendation I do is to include testers early, even before you start creating your API, or even before starting designing your API, you should, should let uh, testers in. One, there are some advantages of this. Um, uh, one being that um, if you create tests of the API before you have implemented the API, API, then as soon as you have implemented the API, your tests can be run immediately and you don't have to wait for the testers to discover your API and then create tests. And um, you should also test the usability of API. Um, and this is the same thing as Ronnie was talking about. And I have, I have two slides that shows, tries to show everything that Ronnie had 
30 minutes to, to say. <laughs> so I just refer to him. But I want to add that you should really test the usability of the API. This is one of my examples of that I was planning to discuss, that is this good API design? For instance, um, first I thought it was not so good to have uh, different parameters for year and month and so, but as APIs are, are global, this might be the only way if you want to have, if you have users all over the world. But if you have users only in Sweden, maybe you should use uh, a format that everyone in Sweden uses instead. So, if you want to know more about this, I mean, you, you already have the lecture from Ronnie, but you could also look at apiux.com, which tells a lot about this. But my main point is, use testers to test the usability, just don't design it. And in, in the usability, you have to use the correct uh, domain-specific language, and that depends on the audience of the API. I mean, if you're using, if your customers are in banking, you should use the correct words that bankers use, not the ones that private persons use. Uh, and the REST APIs, they give us new challenges, as I said before. Um, SOAP is, uh, oh, REST has, has been around for like 10 years, but the last few years it has become immensely popular and it gives you a little more different situation um, because uh, it is more easy to create REST services. They are more loosely coupled. They're not coupled the same way as SOAP services are into a database layer, for instance. So they are, and they are very often um, created with a behavior-driven design as an, as an, as an uh, standpoint. So it will be, they will be diff more, they, it will be different or more difficult to, f to find everything that you need to test. You don't have a, a map over the REST API that you have in the same way as you have over a SOAP API. Um, so, um, you, as I told you before, you, when you're testing REST services, you might have to apply more context-driven practices because maybe the um, organization creating REST services or the developers creating REST services are not as mature as, as uh, SOAP uh, organizations, SOAP-based organizations. But more about um, tomorrow. There will be a talk about the cons uh, on this uh, by uh, Niklas Reimers, a colleague of mine in, in SmartBear. So, what about the tools that we create? <laughs> uh, another question: If you are a tester, somewhere you are, you are doing testing. Obviously, do you do uh, do you use Postman for testing your APIs? Okay, <laughs> a few. I'm sorry to say that's not testing. <laughs> uh, the cat that wants to order food from the, from the pet store, he, he wouldn't be very disappointed because it wouldn't work if you only use Postman for testing. Or maybe it works, but not all the time and not the quality you want. Um, using Postman you can do ad hoc testing, but if you're a true tester, you want to, to uh, test much more than just that the function works once. You want to test sequences of, of, of uh, calls. You want to test uh, things that are not expected to happen. You, you don't just t test the happy path of calls, you test uh, the unhappy path also. And you try to break things, because it's not until you break something that you know the limit of the, the function itself. So, testers do more. They do, for instance, scenario-based testing which uh, in, in um, short is um, a sequence of, uh, of API calls. And after every API call, you have to check the results. And the tool should handle doing this kind of tests. So it's the same cat again. And this API, I show you the, the sequence of API calls in it. So first you may do a login, and then you do a search, and you get some data from the database. Um, and you, then after that, you found something interesting, you do the order. And all these calls, of course, have to be tested. And they have to be tested in that order. So the tool you're using should be able to either record this in, a, in an easy way, or it should be really easy to create these steps and check the results of each value. And uh, the test script could look something like this. So it's not just the call API. 
you, you add some user to a database and then you check that you can log in with that user in the database. Uh, and then you call a next API to search and so on. So these kinds of, of sequences you have to do in testing. And you can do this with uh, the simplest tools, but then you have to do it manually. You have to, to be able to do real testing, you should be able to run this many, many times for different users, for different products in your database and so on. And it must be able, you must be able to do it automatically in a, uh, really quick. Um, yeah, data-driven testing. Actually, I've already shown that you put use data from a database to drive your tests. And also, simulation is really important. Because uh, in the previous slide, I didn't do any testing of the, the, the uh, external APIs. It could be very expensive to start call, calling the Klarna and DHL companies to start delivering things just because you want to test. So you should be able to simulate the external APIs you're using. So that's something your tool needs to do also. And it's very good if your tool also can um, cha uh, do changes on the simulated APIs that some maybe it doesn't answer as quickly as it should do, maybe it answers wrong. And so a test script should test what's happening then. Your own API should handle these errors gracefully. And as a last uh, suggestion, I also <laughs> actually suggest that when you have written all these tests and run them successfully and created your API and you know everything works, SLA and so on, you should supply the tests that you have written to your customers uh, and so they can run them themselves. And this uh, gives many advantages. For instance, uh, the customer will trust you. They can see how you have tested it. They will also get some kind of documentation because your tests are showing exactly how you should, your APIs are supposed to be called. And uh, as a third thing, if the user uses the same tool, she, 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 he or she can run your tests. And uh, they can also simulate your API because they are in the same situation as you are. And, of course, everything that um, I've been talking about, uh, you can do with SOAP UI. And it's open source, and it's, it's just a download, and, and do all, use it for all the needs you need. Uh, um, and I was talking about REST previously, and um, in SOAP UI 4.6 we have we have had REST support in SOAP UI for a long time, but in SOAP UI 4.6, we're making it much easier to use. And we're not done with it. We will uh, keep on doing it, keep on adding um, this uh, uh, REST functionality in upcoming versions. But we need uh, feedback. So we released this version two days ago, and we would really like to have uh, feedback on what you think of the new REST functionality in it. So you could email me at my address at SmartBear. You can also um, go out to talk to me at the booth. And we will have a demo tomorrow at 20 minutes to 12, I think, about the new SOAP UI 4.6. So takeaways from this, uh, I really want to point out that, that you should include testers early, even before you deci start designing your API, and, I, and definitely before implementing it. And testing is much more than checking. You have to do scenario-based testing, and they have to run automatically. And REST is coming. I, I, I think, I mean, SOAP will still be huge and will continue to grow. But for pe public APIs, I think REST is, um, yeah, it will be growing a lot. OK, questions? Hi. Um, so just to clarify, I, I'm not sure I understood. Do you see a difference between test-driven development and testing APIs? Because we do test-driven development, and we test all of our APIs that way. Is it wrong, and should we do something differently? Or No, actually, I'm, 
What, do you, you mean unit testing or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean actually, um, when I say that testers should uh, create the tests before um, the APIs are are developed, it's it's almost the same thing as unit testing. But unit testing for me is when you write a class and you write the tests of the class before you implement it. This is exactly the same thing, but on the IP API level instead. So yeah, that's. It's test-driven test development, but on the API level yeah. design. On modern framework, you can test the APIs too, obviously. So, yeah. So you don't necessarily just test the code, but you test, yeah. simulate the user, and all that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, not not all the tools that you're using to create um, um, APIs can do this type of scenario-based testing, and data-driven testing, and so on. Okay. Other questions? So first of all, I have to thank you for some product placement, not the Klarna one because I'm working there, but because of the cat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> because actually uh, you can find on, on uh, GitHub, uh, Klarna's account, something called cat, K-A-T-T, <laughs> which is an API testing tool, uh, scenario driven. But the question is actually, uh, what is your experience with testing REST APIs being more contextual? Uh, because you, you mentioned that uh, companies are uh, have a different level of maturity uh, yeah. when implementing REST. So what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so contextual or in what way is it contextual? What do you need to do? Uh, um, I, th I, th I think it's because um, one of the reasons is because it's uh, very easy to start creating REST services compared to SOAP. So uh, you will ha have more inexperienced departments starting creating this. And also because there are n the, the rules around how to document SOAP are more strict than, than uh, how, to, how to document REST. There is no agreed standard on how to document REST APIs. You have Waddle, for instance, but almost no one uses it. But uh, at, at SOAP, you have to use the whistles, and there is everything defined. So you can do coverage testing, for instance, easily. But uh, mostly, it's, it's, uh, you should listen to Niklas Reimer's talk tomorrow, because he will talk more about the different approaches you should take, depending on what your organization is already knowing and how mature it is in, in this field. OK? Great. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you.